Uh, right. <clears throat> Giri, just a, a quick point. I mean, so this wave will, as you're saying, I mean, uh, you put out another report and said, well, sometime in May this should peak, right? But the point is that uh, this will peak. But this one has, this wave has affected younger people a lot more, right? Uh, so, so uh, and the point is that it's, it'll peak uh, and in the cases and number of deaths, etc. will start to fall, economic activity starts to come back. But then inevitably we will get another wave. My question is, will younger people, uh, unless and of course they are vaccinated, really be willing to step out and sort of, uh, you know, consume, spend, uh, which essentially is uh, what drives the economy, till they are vaccinated? And that may be a while off. Yeah, that question is one question which uh, most people will confidently answer. Yes, they will step out. And this is a country which is doing kumbh mela and uh, weddings in the midst of a raging wave. So young people stepping out is not at all in question whether there are uh, on, uh, any more waves or not. In terms of spending, uh, the more the duration of the lockdown, the more the uh, accumulation of spending and uh, we will see all of that being released when the lockdown ends. And uh, between the end of this year and the next wave, we'll see a spurt in spending. So it will be very um, similar to what happened last year. We saw in the festival season a lot of uh, uh, pent-up demand uh, get directed into discretionary items. The same might repeat with slightly different time. It might be earlier, it might be within two, three months. Um, uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm saying that uh, uh, consumer discussion is a hot buy because many white goods are also impacted by raw material prices and that has moved very adversely. So at least in the June quarter, you'll probably see very bad results. And uh, in the July, August, September quarter, there could be a spurt in spending as people come out and resume their spending and traveling and all that until the next wave hits. In terms of younger people, yes, I'm not a epidemiologist, but uh, I would expect that as uh, successive uh, waves are uh, featuring more infectious mutants. Uh, they'll also uh, end up by virtue of that very fact uh, affecting younger and younger people and uh, also get diluted, I hope. And therefore, uh, my expectation is that by the end of uh, uh, 2021, we'll probably not see this wave, but two more waves. And each wave will be quicker and going up and quicker and coming down because of the greater degree of infectiousness. And probably, uh, hopefully, we'll see a diluted version uh, settle down towards the end of this year, and with that, we'll be rid of this. That's the way I see it uh, progressing, given the duration and intensity of last year's wave and this year's wave. And also, vaccination will help. We are currently still only doing 3 million, probably not even that now that this shortage issue has come up. But if we pick that up and more vaccines become available, then between uh, the greater infectiousness of the waves and the uh, vaccine availability and administration expanding, we'll probably bring down the uh, next wave's duration pretty substantially and reach back to normalcy. And that's what I expect markets to ultimately reflect. They'll not behave with the same violence and the nervousness that they behaved last year, in spite of the fact that this year, only we are stuck and other major economies are up and down. Right. Giri, uh, so... Uh, you know, you're saying that uh, lots of things there that you said. Uh, in terms of advice to clients, uh, Giri, uh, you know, I'm getting a sense that the market will continue to look through the pain and uh, expect recovery whenever that may be. You're saying we, we should probably see two more waves before the end of this year. A lot will depend on vaccinations and, and that will determine how people are impacted. Uh, but purely as advice to investors, uh, where do you think there still lies uh, upside and where do you think markets have not fully discounted downside? Right. Um, I think uh, uh, we have been very consistent from the beginning of this year in saying that we would rather place our trust in the progress back to normalcy of advanced economies, US particularly, and therefore we've been recommending to clients they overweight IT, uh, they overweight export sectors, uh, some of the uh, individual names that we like were uh, names like CIPLA. Uh, among the domestic companies, uh, we like principally those which were uh, less uh, impacted by economic activity, such as insurance companies, HDFC Life, SBI Life. Uh, we also uh, 
have been recommending global cyclicals rather than uh, Indian cyclicals. So all the metal stocks, especially Indalco and Tata Steel, uh, and they've done well. But even at this stage, I would continue with that recommendation. I wouldn't say that uh, most of the money is uh, made and therefore we should withdraw. There is quite a lot more to go. Uh, at least for a couple of months more, we should hold. Uh, one of the uh, domestic uh, names, I would just think that, you know, at a time when earnings downgrades are possible, even in uh, the strong private banks, it's difficult to see the stocks uh, dramatically outperforming. You don't normally see outperformance and earnings downgrades happening at the same time. And I expect that if this uh, tight, uh, uh, limited, restricted activity conditions persist, then you would end up seeing uh, softening of earnings all around. So only companies where uh, there is limited dependence on domestic economic activity are the ones to uh, expect that uh, will not suffer the brunt of downgrades, and those are what we are uh, sticking with. So this is what I'll recommend for the next couple of months. Chemicals is another sector which has been a long-term favorite of ours, and uh, that's done very well, and uh, we're still in the midst of an upgrade cycle. So uh, the one sector which we were overweight, but which we are not overweight now, but uh, we have to watch that very closely. Select names in auto, because when the cycle turns, it turns dramatically quickly, and the stocks will fly off. But you know, we still are watching that space closely. I wouldn't uh, 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 shy away from uh, getting back into auto and private banks uh, if I sense that you know the economic activity is picking up and the markets are feeling more comfortable. But till then, uh, till till that time, I would uh, play it a little bit safe. It's not that I'm being defensive. Uh, Giri, it's, it's just that I'm uh, riding the uh, uh, economic momentum in the 